where to answer the phone. What difference does it make? None today, but tomorrow, if video phone comes, as well it might, then people everywhere will be getting spiffed up for a phone call. With these kinds of technological advances, who knows what the future will look like? We've always dreamed of looking into the future. This program offers a glimpse into tomorrow to see how today's science could revolutionize life in 2025. We'll travel through time to meet a typical family of the future and their super intelligent home computer. But just how soon will it be before computers get really up close and personal? This is something we didn't used to be able to do. What I see happening with computers is that they open up new ways for us to reach one another. Digital technologies will provoke the biggest lifestyle revolution in history. They are going to be extremely realistic and they are going to have the intelligence to have a conversation with you that's indistinguishable from a real person. Our relationship with machines and each other will never be the same again. Friendships will be just as likely to be with virtual characters as with actual humans. Come with us on a journey into the future to see how we'll be living in 2025. It's closer than you think. Johnny DeMarco knows his autopilot is a safer driver than he is, so he can take a nap without worrying. In 2025, people trust intelligent systems more than themselves. The digital chauffeur has 2020 vision. It's constantly linked to satellite positioning and sensors in the road and has never gotten a ticket. Johnny's 53, but gene therapy means he's in better shape than his father was at 40. As security checks his ID, he's set to enjoy another 20 years of working life. His home is high tech, but the technology is kept firmly out of sight. Voice activated systems are hidden everywhere and always ready to help. Make me a coffee. Built in 2020, it's an attractive and versatile house, ideal for a family of four. How's your day been? Good, how was yours? Oh, very good. Gianni's a civil engineer. He grew up in England, but moved to the US after meeting his wife, Sarah. Some nature program. Their daughter, Jenny, is 18. She's been obsessed with computers since she was four. She plans to study computer science in college. Her younger brother, Tom, doesn't believe technology can solve everything. With global warming speeding up, all he cares about is saving the planet. Gianni's back in time to catch a 3D link with Sarah. She's an architect, away on a business trip in Australia. She's also a tele-immersion junkie. Tele-immersion means distant friends and family can chat face-to-face -face without leaving home. Because the images are three-dimensional, users feel they're really in the same space. Nothing has ever made the world seem so small. The 20th century was the age of the telephone, but the 21st century belongs to tele-immersion. It's now so cheap to use, we take it for granted. A generation ago, the idea of sharing space with someone halfway around the world was something people could only dream about. There was never any doubt that our homes would get smart. Ambient Intelligent Networks, or Ambitels, are the 21st century alternative to a house full of servants. Good morning. You asked me to wake you at 7 a.m. so you can prepare your 10.30 meeting with Ivan Cooper. Ambitels can track and identify people anywhere in the house because everyone wears a tiny radio tag. Johnny's is embedded in a pendant. After he's been to the bathroom, it only takes a few seconds for the system to analyze his urine. It then displays the result and relays any abnormal data to the medical center. Ambitel takes care of the little things around the home. As soon as Gianni wakes up, it turns the heat up and puts the coffee on. It tracks him as he gets to the kitchen and turns the lights on. All he has to do is pick up a mug 
and pour his coffee. When he spills it, he doesn't need to clean up. The Muppet does that. This kind of robot assistant is an add-on to the Ambitel's network of intelligent wireless appliances that makes life so easy. Ambient intelligence wasn't taken seriously until the technology seemed within reach. In 2001, the electrical giant Philips opened a dedicated Ambitel lab at their research campus in Holland. With a living room, two bedrooms, and a kitchen, it was about the cushiest lab in the world, and the perfect setting for scientists and psychologists to see how people reacted to life with intelligent machines. We have the technology to bring ambient intelligence into the world. But a major problem that we face is the problem of natural interaction. So if we would like to have a situation where people communicate with their environment in a very similar way as they communicate with each other, that calls for a true multimodal interaction style where you combine speech, vision, tactile movement, body language, emotion and expression. When Arts was speaking, no one knew if people would be driven crazy by living in such a high-tech playpen. No one really knew if people wanted machines that did everything for them. Ambitel has made our lives easier in many ways. We no longer have to worry about basic food shopping. Tiny radio ID tags embedded in packaging means the system always knows what's in the cupboard. When groceries run low, it orders a delivery from the local supermarket. Yeah, the system ordered them yesterday. Emil Arts foresaw other possibilities. For instance, that you have some home flow management system in your kitchen that really knows about all the activities that the family and the home would like to do. And your kitchen could simply support that by showing you the agenda and the calendar of certain days. And that is just a very simple example of a home that would support you as a butler would do in the last century. But even in 2025, the best solutions are often low-tech. Take the DeMarco's eco-friendly house. Water is heated by solar panels, while a bed of moss on the roof provides extra insulation. The communication system on Johnny's car connects with his wearable computer, but only offers information when the road is clear. You've had three face mails in the last hour. Only one from Sarah needs your attention. Okay, I'll Radio ID tags and voice recognition mean the vehicle always knows who's driving and automatically remembers their preferences for music, temperature, and food. Personal playlist systems have been around for almost 20 years, but their potential first became obvious in 2001 when Philip showed off a prototype device called Easy Access. Because there is speech recognition, uh, it will identify you and it will start activating your personal preferences. If you ask for new content, it will go to uh, the internet and it will get content that's suitable to your taste. And it can do that for any uh, member of the family because it's a personalized system. Genre rock. Genre. Rock. Genre rock. Artist the Beatles. Artist Beatles. Melody. Melody. Boris was no Caruso. The cleverest thing about his baby was the way it could identify melodies, even if Boris sang them. Songs. You'll have the situation in the future that uh, when you have a melody line, you heard the song somewhere on the radio, but you cannot remember the title of that song. You'll just hum that song to the uh, system. It will uh, get that song somewhere from the internet, wherever it is, and it'll it it'll play that song for you. Add song to playlist. The latest software agents make countless daily choices for Gianni and Sarah about anything from music to groceries. This frees up more time for them to relax together. Just, uh, Are you feeling a bit stressed? No, I think they're going pretty well. Digital technologies have also created new ways to revisit our memories. In 2001, scientists at Philips tested a wireless system that made it a snap to display still photographs all over the home. 
The memory tablet was one of the first ambient devices that really worked. Once big screen displays improved, it meant whole walls could be turned into photographic memories. The most widely used software agents deal with TV. By 2002, tests were already underway on systems that could decide which programs we wanted to see, record, and even schedule them for us, creating a virtual TV channel for each viewer. 25 years later, Tom takes his own channel for granted. Please last night special. These days, the only live TV most people watch are newscasts. Large polymer LED displays mean we watch ever bigger and sharper screens. A thin layer of polymers can turn patio doors into wide screens or even lights. A quarter of a century ago, a leading pioneer in the field was Odd Semple. Everywhere where you need a display, you can expect this technology to come. The light generation is very efficient and is done within the material. No glowing wires or gases or vacuum is needed. Just add this layer and have light. Light emitting diodes can only emit one color, but red, green and blue ones can be combined to make color screens. In 2001, these were small and had poor resolution. Today, the smallest full color screens are incredibly sharp and less than half an inch across. The largest high def polymer screens are over 30 feet wide. By 2020, polymer LEDs had become the dominant technology for visual display. The brightness can be very high and very easy to control. See-through screens on the patio doors can change the view from the DeMarco's house. In the morning, Sarah merely tells the Ambitel to open them up. True view, please. Uh, no. If the weather is lousy, she simply calls up a sunnier scene. Jenny loves being immersed in virtual worlds. Her wearable can conjure up any environment she wants to inhabit, even when she's really in her bedroom. Her shoes, eyeglass display, and finger rings contain tiny sensors that transmit her exact movements. This data is inserted into whichever virtual world she wants. You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. Boil and bubble. <laughs> yes, those old sorcerers had the right idea, but not the right equipment to really look into the future. But now, by combining their old recipes with my modern electronics, I'll really be able to look into the future. Eh, Chimes? Oh, yes, sir, but I trust everything is in order this time. Of course everything is in order. Let's see now. The Ignatron uses the eye of a newt for its grid. The Thyrotron, a toe of the frog for the cathode. The photomultiplier, the wool of a bat, and the tail of a hog. Well, everything seems to be A-OK. -okay. Now for the test. Ready, chimes? Ready, sir. Oh, ho, ho. this invention will rock the world! Congratulations, sir. I think you just rocked the world. Confound it, Chimes. That was a mistake. Something went wrong. I wonder what. 
Begging your pardon, sir, but perhaps your nephew Diala at the laboratories could be of some assistance. By George, I'll call Diala and find out. <laughs> ah, can't let him suspect why I'm calling, though. Bell Telephone Laboratories, Dialer speaking. Uh, hello, Dialer, my nephew. Hi, Unc. What's new with you? Uh, well, well, that's what I was about to ask you. Uh, uh, what's new at the labs? Gosh, Unc, everything we're working on is new. Anything in particular I can help you with? Uh, uh, well, yes, yes. Uh, what about looking into the future? Looking into the future? Why, here at the Bell Labs, it's part of our duty to look as far ahead as possible. Yes, yes, yes. But what do you use? A crystal ball? Conjure up a vision or what? Hardly, Unc. You see, Sybil helps us. Oh, you're using one of those old-fashioned oracles, eh? Not exactly, Unc. Sybil is a computer-like machine that helps us predict the future of... Oh, oh no. No. No, they can't. They just can't have invented my invention. And through Sybil, we can try out a proposed communication service before time and money is spent developing it. <laughs> if this Sybil really works, maybe Dyler will tell me what he's seen in the future. Uh, uh, Dyler, my boy, just what can we look forward to? Well, Unc, in the years ahead, the telephone of the future will be an even more prominent and versatile part of our lives than it is today. Take a typical day in the life of your great-grandnephew Cordell. It's a spring morning as we look in on his home. Breakfast's over. Cord, who's an executive with an interspace engineering company, kisses his wife, Pat, and their two children, Princess and Junior, goodbye. And leaves for the office. A soundproof room attached to the house. Without the problems of commuting or traffic jams, he's ready to start work in a matter of minutes. First, there's an intercontinental business conference. A touch of a button and picture phones bring the conferees together. In seconds, company executives located around the world are deep in discussions over business details. Even printed material is exchanged among the group by telephonic machines, as if they were all in the same room. The conference over, Cord picks up a waiting telephone call that rings as soon as his line becomes free. It's one of his engineers at an outer space construction job. The project has been hit by a derelict rocket. Plans for removing the rocket and repairing the damage are worked out between Cord and the space project by a telephone conversation. Now that's carried through space on a thin rod-like beam of invisible infrared light projected from an optical maser. Operating on no more power than an ordinary light bulb, the optical maser will be able to carry hundreds of thousands of telephone calls and television programs all at one time on a single beam of light. Equipment and materials needed to do the job are ordered over an advanced dataphone system, which reads the recorded information and transmits it to the data receiving center. Here, a data phone receiving unit duplicates the ordering information, which is fed into data processing machines and electronic computers. The processed information on the ordered items is then data phoned to the correct manufacturing, assembling, and shipping points around the world. On the other side of the house, Junior is getting help with his homework. The program comes from an education center and is carried on a special TV circuit via telephone waveguide, a hollow tube that can carry hundreds of television programs and telephone calls at one time. Later in the afternoon, Pat is browsing around the dress shop on her picture phone. A design in the new spring colors catches her eye. It's just what she could wear to the Bennetts for dinner. Oh, 
dinner. It's almost that time. And Princess is still playing outside with her friends on their helicycles. But her wristwatch radio telephone makes it easy to call even young teenagers home for dinner. Later in the evening, Cord and Junior watch a real World Series game. Being telecast from Tokyo via communication satellites. The North American pennant winners are playing the Far East League champs, the Tokyo Samurais. Pat and Princess, more interested in culture than sports, are tuned to a program from the Museum of Modern Art that's showing typical examples of movies seen on the late, late shows in the mid-1900s. Yes, the average day in the life of an average family in the future will be easier than ours today. But few things will be easier than telephonic communications. Uh, sounds great, my boy, but isn't it a bit fantastic? Not at all, Unc. In fact, the data phone system is already in use. And we're experimenting right now with picture phones here in the Bell Laboratories. Then, too, the day of communicating by satellites is here. The waveguide system and the optical maser are being developed here at the labs along with other telephone services for the future. <coughs> Talking of the future, there's one thing you've overlooked. What's that, Unc? The smellophone. The what? Yes, the smellophone. Think of the possibilities, being able to smell things over the telephone. Why, it's the greatest of my great ideas. Confidentially, I think the idea... <laughs> ...indubitably has questionable sociological ramifications. <laughs> You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. Beneath these residential streets, a quiet revolution is occurring. Ameritech is transforming its electronic infrastructure with high-speed digital switches and fiber optic transmission technology, creating an information age network with the promise of fantastic new services in voice, data, and video. If you're going to be the uh, premier access provider in the information age, then your role is to be able to get information from any person to any person, from any place uh, to anywhere any format and any volume. So if, if that's your goal, and basically at this point in time for what the residents needs, that's the phone company's role, and you see yourself keeping that role, then video is a natural extension. As a matter of fact, a recent survey did, of customers did suggest that consumers did want more services from their telephone uh, company in terms of information services and perhaps uh, uh, fiber. Uh, to give options like high-definition television, cable, etc. Fiber has the capability to deliver any and all, simultaneously or in series, whatever a customer wants. The issue will not be whether fiber is to the home and therefore we can get, move everything down that pipe. The issue will be what will people want. The pipe will be in place to get it there. What services will customers want in the future? One possibility is the powerful new television developed in Japan with stunning picture quality and bright stereo sound. A powerful microprocessor transforms a simple television into a sophisticated computer. 
Advanced television is challenging the United States to redefine broadcast TV standards and may require fiber optic transmission. Advanced television could open a new service opportunity for Ameritech. With high definition television, the whole concept of two-way video communication could be revitalized. Now, this is, of course, a speculation, but the potential is there because uh, high-definition television on a two-way tailored connection basis uh, reopens, potentially reopens the limitations of picture phone and possibly would then be uh, something that the market would, would really want. Two-way video communication is only one potential use of advanced television. Building upon the power of Ameritech's switched network, a wide variety of new services to the home could become commonplace. Advanced television will not only improve home entertainment, it will bring a computer into the user's home providing access to a world of resources. Ameritech believes the information age might very well reach the home through television computers. You're also able to provide access to other information sources where they may be things like um, databases of video catalogs um, where people can browse through video catalogs that are in a high quality video format. The home is going to be provided an opportunity of tremendously advanced services, information services. The question is can we package those information services through applications that the consumer understands. We're looking at what are the types of applications and services that telephone company subscribers would use based on a high quality video signal and we have to look at how are people going to interactively um, work with these different types of applications and media um, and as visually how do we communicate and how can we take advantage of the quality we have with HGTV and provide more than just transmission, provide advanced capabilities and access capabilities, um, intelligent network capabilities as well. One of the biggest problems facing users of information services today is learning how to access complex databases. With advanced television and an electronic pointing device, Ameritech is studying how people can use new technologies to meet everyday needs in a simple way. This is uh, basically an improved version of your home television set. Uh, it's improved in a couple of, of ways. Uh, for one, the picture quality is somewhat better than you can get uh, with your TV set now. And then it's, it's what we call a smart TV set. Uh, there is a computer built in, basically. Although it is not visible to you, the user, uh, there's a computer that's running the application and is able to do both drawing the screens and putting up the various graphical elements and also making requests of the network to bring in the pictures, which are really coming from a remote database. What I want to show you is a, an indication of how we think a visual interface might be used to help people navigate through a database of any kind. Now, in this case, what we have is a, a real estate service, perhaps maintained by a chamber of commerce or a board of realtors, where the idea is to help a person locate a home that they may be interested in buying. And what we want to do is, is use the visual attributes of the search to make it easier for the person to do that. The critical thing here is that I don't have to understand the nature of the data or the way it is organized, that I simply use the images and react to the images basically by pointing to them so that I can guide the user through a very complex set of data in a very simple way. And we think this is a much simpler and more natural way for the people to, to come up and use what is really a very complex computer-based system but without having to know very much at all about how it works or, or knowing the, the magic codes that you have to type in. Ameritech Publishing is examining applications for its data. Although Ameritech is interested in many information services, current regulations bar the company's involvement. One future offering is electronic yellow pages. If you think of our business and the fact that we have telephone directories with advertising appearing in those directories, we can someday put that advertising into a database and then people sitting at home would have the ability to dial into that database and similar to paging through a directory, retrieve information from that. I mean, that's the nature of our business is trying to bring together consumers and advertisers. Now let's just take some uh, potential applications. Uh, let's assume that you're sitting at home and that you peruse the menu and that it's to your liking. Cheese, miso, 
We have a black ravioli made from a carol fish and a seafood and a shrimp sauce. You then key information back and forth where you make your dinner reservation. You get your dinner reservation confirmed. Uh, you may be able to uh, place your order right then in terms of what, what you like, wines, et, et cetera. Uh, you may have an indication of, of uh, the total cost. You won't need to bring your wallet because you can key in your MasterCard or your American Express and do it all. You may be able to peruse a, a layout of the restaurant itself. All that done uh, in advance just from your home that uh, today may take several calls or, or even an on-site visit. So, I mean, the applications are, are unlimited. The information service is a delivery capability that one becomes unconscious of. Not unlike driving a car. One gets so used to driving a car that it becomes sort of second nature. And I really think that's, uh, that's what I expect information services will be. By supporting switch video communications, by providing simple data retrieval, Ameritech is helping residential customers realize the benefits of the information age.